Greetings, everyone. Today, we're going to look at PN junctions, the heart of our semiconductors. So a quick reminder, where we last left off, looking at an energy diagram, we saw we had a valence band And we also had a conduction band. And we had something called Fermi level, which in a pure and intrinsic semiconductor would be smack dab in the middle. But for the doped materials, the N material and the P material, we find the Fermi level moves up in the case of N material and down in the case of P material. Okie doke. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine a piece of P material with a piece of N material. Now when I say combine, this is not a mechanical combination. We don't, you know, press these things together mechanically or glue them or anything like this. This has to be a uh, contiguous original crystal lattice, which is then doped at various levels. So it's one sort of thing, if you will. Um, not two separate things that are bolted together. So here's what we're looking at. On one side, we have P material. On the other side, we have N material. Now, I'm going to indicate this as P material by putting a bunch of little pluses over here, and the same thing over here, little minuses for the N material. Now, what's going to happen is that um, room temperature, we got some thermal energy. Some of these electrons fall into adjacent holes. And what we wind up with right in here I'll do it like this in a different color. We wind up with a region that is depleted of free charge, right? So we call this little area in here a depletion region. Now, here's a really important thing. When we combine these, these Fermi levels wind up matching. So here's our energy diagram again. And again, you can think of this as going across this axis, like going across the crystal from P to N in this case. So again, here's our energy level up here. In the case of uh, P, so you're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw the P over here and the N over here. In the case of P, we see the valence band is like this. And we see the conduction band is like this. And the Fermi level is over here. Now this Fermi level, as I said, this is going to be consistent across the material. So I'm going to draw this straight across. Now the N material, right, we have a situation where the valence is like down here by comparison. And the conduction band is like so, right? So this part, again, this diagram with the low Fermi level this part, this diagram with the high Fermi level, right? N versus P. So what ends up happening is in between we have this depletion region, right? So this is your depletion region right here.
And what this makes essentially is an energy hill, right? Think of this as an energy hill. The size of this will actually depend on the material. You know, we have, as you'll see, different values for you know, silicon versus some other material. Now let's take this thing and hook it up to a voltage source and see what ends up happening. So I'm going to take my old PN over here. I'll just put in a couple of these pluses and minuses and put a little current limiting resistor here and a power supply. Now, because this is not a symmetrical device, I can put the power supply in two ways. So we're going to start off in this particular orientation. Now, let's consider the electron flow. Right, so this is the flow of your electrons. What do we wind up with happening here? Well, remember, majority carrier for an N material is the electron. So what I have is electrons coming in. They are the majority carrier. Now we have this depletion region in here, our energy hill. If there is sufficient source potential, these electrons can sort of climb this hill, right? Sort of bridge that gap, in which case they wind up in the P material and they are attracted back to the positive terminal of the power supply. What ends up happening is we get current flow, right? The barrier potential here, right? That energy hill. For silicon, I'll put hill in scare quotes over hill. Is oops, need a C in there. Silicon, silicon. Um, uh, the the energy hill for silicon is approximately we approximated at 0.7 volts. I'll draw a nicer curve in a sec, but we can just approximate approximate that as 0.7 volts. So in this particular circuit, what would end up happening is you would have your source voltage. Let's say it's 10 volts. The electrons are flowing through it. Now remember, the conventional current flow is going in the opposite direction. Okay, There's this basically a 0.7 volt, roughly, voltage drop across this thing. So the balance of that potential, 10 minus 0.7 or 9.3, drops across R. Ohm's law tells you what the actual current is. Right? So, ideally, you can kind of think of this as a short. That's the, the most coarse sort of idealization we can come up with. All right? A little bit more accurate if you just say eh, it's 0.7 volts. I'll, I'll draw some models in a sec. But before we do, what happens if we turn this around? So I'm just going to flip the battery over here, flip the power supply. Now, once again, we have our depletion region. Now we look at our electron flow. Okay, so that wants to go like this. So the electrons immediately fall into the holes in the P material. And of course, the electrons back here are initially drawn back to the positive terminal of the power supply. Again, this is electron flow. So initially, there is this sort of short lived little current. Right? Because what ends up happening is that sort of dies because there's you know only so much, right? Um, because it's not it's not being sort of uh, replenished as it would be in this case. So there's a small short-lived current, right? Which goes to zero. 
ideally. Now at that point, there's no current flow, right? Ideally, there is no current flow. If we crank the voltage up, what ends up happening is, again, we get this sort of little transient event, but the depletion region just widens to accommodate whatever this potential is. So what ends up happening is, ideally, this thing looks like an open. So it's a highly asymmetric device. In one direction, it appears to be a short, but in the other direction, it acts like it's uh, an open. And you can imagine that's a pretty useful thing. But, you know, this is the first device that we've looked at, you know, uh, resistors, capacitors, inductors, those things are symmetrical. They're um, linear bilateral devices, right? You can't put them in the circuit backwards, really. This is not. These, these things, this little PN junction is unidirectional, or you could call it unilateral if you wanted to. So it's nonlinear. The actual curve of this, the actual current voltage curve, is a, a logarithmic based curve. So if this is the voltage that we're seeing across the PN junction, and this is the current through it, we get something that kind of goes up like this. And this knee on the curve is roughly 0.7 volts. So we can make um, a little approximation. So this idea that, oh, it's 0.7 volts, what you're really doing is you're, you're saying that it, you know, it's perfectly flat out, just pretend it's perfectly flat, perfectly flat out to 0.7, and then, you know, it's straight up, okay? Um, in fact, there is some resistance in here, and an even better approximation would be to say that it comes out to the 0.7 and then this little resistive element that's in here would produce a little bit of a slope so instead of going perfectly straight up there's this little bit of a slope to it you know versus this guy which I'll just draw by comparison All right it's kind of coming up and, you know doing this sort of thing so there is uh, in the text there is a, a precise equation for this called the Shockley equation that would allow you to find a very specific value. You know, in any given circuit, if you have a PN junction, depending on the precise value of current and voltage, you know, you're not going to necessarily get exactly 0.7, right? You know, you might get 0.68 or 0.71 or something like that. But this is a reasonable approximation. It works pretty well. So for many circuits, you can just kind of say, well, here's a PN junction, and it's going to be about 7 tenths of a volt, plus or minus, but that's what we'll use. And we just kind of go from there. All right. The idea of a PN junction is sort of the big building block. A PN junction by itself brings forward something called a diode. But it's also part of things like bipolar transistors or junction uh, field effect transistors, other kinds of devices. So what we're going to look at in the next video is the diode. And there are several different kinds of diodes. You might be familiar with, for example, LEDs, light emitting diodes. Uh, but there are many different kinds. There are rectifying diodes, signal diodes, for actor diodes, um, and so on and so forth. So this is sort of the ground zero of this whole thing. And the key to remember is this little energy diagram that we saw in the first video, and the fact that in this material, the, the Fermi level will be consistent through the material, and that creates this sort of disparity, if you will, between the conduction and the uh, valence bands. It creates the energy hill. As long as we have sufficient source out here, we can overcome that energy hill and get a nice current flow. Right? So here's our exact, here's a simple version, here's a somewhat more exacting version, and we'll take a closer look at this next time around.